Hello and welcome back to the A to Z of archaeology. Now today we're going to be looking at the letter C and C stands for carbon dating. Carbon dating is famous, almost everyone has heard of it and this is partly because it's a very useful and widely used tool. It can be used to date almost anything of a biological origin, ranging from wood to animal and human remains, from things which have been burned in a fire, such as burned seeds, to uh, even uh, certain aspects of soil and plant matter within. So carbon dating is very useful, and it relies upon the principle of atomic decay. Every atom is made up of protons, neutrons and electrons. The electrons whirl around in shells on the outside of the atom, like planets orbiting a sun. But as Obi-Wan would say, that's no sun, that's a nucleus. The nucleus, the bit in the middle, is made up of protons and neutrons. In some elements, these are not in balance, and as a result, they are radioactive. They emit energy in the form of ionising radiation to try and achieve balance and become a more stable element. This is radioactive decay. Now in this instance, the atom and the element which we are employing is the carbon-14 atom. Carbon-14, the radioactive form of carbon, is formed in the upper atmosphere when nitrogen-14 is struck by cosmic rays, imparting an extra neutron. This radioactive form of carbon is very similar chemically to regular carbon and passes into plants via photosynthesis. From there, it passes into any animals which eat plants or plant material, this carbon is then passed on via biomass to any creatures who eat those creatures who have eaten the plants. Thus, whether you're a carnivore, omnivore or vegetarian, you have ingested radioactive carbon. This process means that for every trillion carbon atoms in your body, 12 of them are radioactive. It was Willard Libby in 1956 who discovered that the half-life of this radioactive carbon is approximately 5,600 years. This means that approximately every 5,600 years, radioactive carbon decays by half. So, as soon as a living thing stops replenishing the carbon-14 in its body, when it dies, the ratio of carbon-14 to, say, carbon-12 begins to change. This changed ratio can be measured using mass spectrometry. And using this ratio, we can estimate when the organism stopped replenishing the radioactive carbon, that is, when it died. This sounds wonderful, does it not? However, there are limitations and certain caveats. The carbon dating method is based upon the assumption that the half-life and the dose of radioactive carbon is constant over time. However, studies have shown that sunspot activity, for example, can affect this dosage. However, archaeologists have been careful to calibrate their dates by dating tree rings back through time, and thus estimating the change in dosage over time. Different environments absorb radiocarbon at different rates. The sea is a prime example. This different rate of absorption affects the radiocarbon ratio in sea life, and in turn any creatures who eat the sea life, for example those living in a fishing community. Such things should be taken into consideration. However, these variations can be compensated for, and radiocarbon dating is one of the most useful and widely used dating methods in the world. So there you have it. Carbon dating is rightly famous because it can be used to date almost anything of a biological origin. As long as you can get those caveats in check and also account for any changes in dose over time and you calibrate your dates correctly, uh, carbon dating is a very useful tool. And it's only improving. And um, Now you need a far, more, uh, far smaller sample in some cases uh, to get an, an accurate date than you did even 10 years ago. So carbon dating is only going to improve and, uh, and it's, it's, it's quite rightly used across the world to great effect. So there you have it. Um, hopefully you found this video interesting and or useful. Uh, feel free to comment below or send me a message and I shall get back to you in one way or another. Uh, if you want to, please subscribe, push the button above and uh, you shall never miss out on an Archeo Soup video again. Uh, we also have a Facebook page and a Twitter account. Um, all you need to do is type in Archeo Soup into Facebook or indeed Twitter uh, and you should find those, uh, those concurrently updated um, platforms as it were and also feel free to go and check out archaeosoup.com uh, the hub for all things archaeosoup and it's a rather funky website if i do say so myself and um, so thank you for watching and until next time 
Goodbye.